practice session for this semester, and we are happy to have faculty members here to share their experiences with transitioning to Canvas, which is our overall topic for this month pertaining to making everything accessible. Can't talk. Um, and our OIT staff members here from the Hamlock Course Delivery System will be um, facilitating. So, can we go to Jerry McGreal, who is the manager of that team? Yeah, clearly I'm not Lisa young <laughs> Um She's unfortunately uh, out with a sick child today. So, uh, I'm going to jump in and um, sort of facilitate and try to sort of sock in and not say too much. Um, we're really, really fortunate to have uh, a really good panel of folks uh, to speak with us a little bit today about their experience uh, in moving uh, into can Canvas. Um, I'm trying to introduce everybody here. Uh, Arthur Leal uh, from Agriculture Leadership. Uh, Anne Langendorfer from English. Uh, my son reports she is the best English teacher he has ever had in his life. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Adam Curitan from Philosophy, uh, Jennifer Morrow from Insight Counseling, and Gary Skolitz, also from Insight and Counseling. Um, so I think Dr. Lisa's intention was several fold. Uh, she had shot them uh, some questions, uh, and we got a lot of ground to cover. So uh, we're going to go ahead and, um, and maybe start over here uh, with Arthur and um, just give us a sense, if you would, uh, for uh, what course uh, you've taught using Canvas, uh, who your target audience is, undergrad, um, uh, how you've used Canvas in the class, and <coughs> just sort of your overall uh, sense for uh, the utility of the tool, uh, its ease or not ease of use. Uh, just for your overall experience, and then we're going to walk through um, what their course set looks like and things of that nature. So, yeah, keep it pretty open ended. Okay? All right. Well, I went and had the questions ahead of time, so <laughs> I have a little list of my answers. But um, I teach ad communication courses. So, my courses typically bless you, um, include writing, and with the new courses that I'll be using with Canvas, will be more skill based. So, design, video, web, that kind of stuff. So up to this point, I've used Canvas for two semesters. I just arrived here in June. Um, for a research and business writing course, and then for an issues, uh, ag issues based course. Um, so a lot of writing and things like that uh, for those two courses. Now, I told uh, Lisa just as a, um, just to warn her that I hadn't really used Blackboard since undergrad. <laughs> so I really couldn't speak to Blackboard, but uh, luckily, I actually took over a class for one of our lecturers that, got, um, that had a baby, and so I used a little blackboard for half of this semester. Um, so I have a little bit of a comparison now using the two. But when I was at Florida, I used Canvas as well. Um, so in this course, I've used it, I've not used it for its full capability, so I'll tell you that now. Um, with all these different systems, they say they have all these capabilities, and I I probably have only scratched the surface. So typically I've used it for obviously the syllabus. I definitely use it for grades and when I compare it to Blackboard, now that I've used Blackboard, I've, I really love the way Canvas has that set up. Um, I've used it for exams and I don't usually give exams in my class so this was a new feature for me to use and I love the way it worked with exams and I'll talk a little about that. Obviously putting lectures and then, off, and then doing assignments. So putting this uh, uh, the assignment rubrics, but also allowing the students to upload their assignments there. I'm a little bit of a green person, so I don't like papers, plus I don't have to keep up with them. Um, so what went well? Uh, the quiz function there, I really like that. I like the idea that you can look at, and I don't, again, I don't know what everything Blackboard does, but I like the idea of being able to look at the statistics on the question, see how students were doing. I like some of the functions that it has and deciding what type of question you want to use. Um, all the statistical stuff I thought was great. Um, Dr. Sasso over here has been, was extraordinary in helping me use this for the first time. She helped, uh, she taught me how to use a lockdown browser. I'm not sure if you are familiar with that and if Blackboard uses that, but it's the idea that it locks down the, the students complete, uh, their computer completely. 
when they when they um, open the application and it'll take them straight to campus and they take the test and so that means that they can't do anything else on their computers they can't surf they can't go out of that browser without ending the quiz and so for me I thought that that was a great function I actually still did the quizzes in class because I didn't have a TA then so I was grading all the papers but I still wanted to test them on material so I let the canvas do all the grading for me after I developed that and still could keep grading all the writing assignments um, so that functionality there alone I thought was great um, students were iffy iffy on a electronic test but I did like the features when it switched up the questions and all that kind of stuff and I understand Blackboard does that too but the functionality of that I think worked really well for me I also thought in comparison I don't know if I'm supposed to compare to Blackboard right now, but I am. <laughs> um, in comparison to the interface, it's much more intuitive. The way Canvas operates is easier, I think, for the user. I could, maybe I'm more familiar with it, but every time I tried to look at grades and things in Blackboard, it, was, it just doesn't work very well for me. And it was weird how it did it. Um, this is the first semester I actually used it waiting in my grading, and once you set that function up, you can leave that alone on its own. You don't have to touch that anymore. So for me, I thought that was a great function. I also like the attendance function. Um, as far as doing that, setting that for the max amount of points that you want for attendance and allowing it to calculate that, going through that. The only thing that poses a problem is that when you do that, you also have to know who the students are. Mm -hmm. So that took a little while in the beginning. Um, and I also like the ability to copy pages from other people. Um, they have a whole forum, and it's been a while since I've done it, but a whole forum you can go in five pages that people created. Um, one page that I think Jerry presented in one of his lectures was a page on how to use Canvas. And so last semester I put it up there because the students had never really used Canvas. And so it told them the basics on Canvas. There's a few videos. The basics, um, how to upload assignments, things that would matter to us as instructors. And we would obviously take points off if they're late. So that kind of things. Um, that it did. Some of the things that were challenging for me, which I will say the quiz function, the lockdown browser did cause a couple of problems in terms of students on some of their computers. Um, that became a limitation. Some of them couldn't open it, some things like that. We were, I was able to rectify some with uh, Rosie's help and then some of them, when Rosie wasn't there, I couldn't navigate through it. Um, but that was a little bit of a limitation, but other than that, I thought that the quiz function worked well. Um, I don't know if it's been added, but I couldn't find a picture roster yet on, um, on, it's, it's on Canvas. But when I used uh, Blackboard this half semester, it does have that, and I was like, this is really neat, and I can kind of, you know, so for me, I thought that was a big deal in terms of learning who your students are. It also makes it more effective and time uh, saving when, uh, you're taking attendance and using that attendance function. So those things kind of worked hand in hand for me. Um, and then also, and I know I've filled Jerry's inbox a ton of this, but the plagiarism aspect of it, I know that they've worked um, with getting a plagiarism program and we're using it in a way where it seems, I think, a little bit more like an attachment. Um, when you do the assignments, to me, that presented a few challenges because it was a little different than when I had used at Florida, which was the turn it in. And it was kind of the idea that it worked normal how you set up assignment, and when you opened it like a speed grader, um, which is a function, I don't know if you know that, if you use Canvas. But going through the speed grader, it automatically show the report. You can click on it, do it from that page, and go. With the way that it's used right now, um, integrated into Canvas, I think it's, it, it's not integrated into it in a way that makes it as easy. So things are a little bit different when you do that. And you, you just comment on that uh, real quickly, briefly. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the current integration that we do have is sort of a, it lives over here, sort of outside of Canvas. And so while you're doing things uh, with assignments in Canvas and using Unflag, it still lives over here. Um, we should sometime this summer, uh, we're told certainly by fall, have a new integration which will make it just seamless yeah. within Canvas. So uh, they're working on that. We should have that. So it'll work. Uh, those of you who are familiar with uh, SafeAssign and Blackboard, uh, it'll work just like that. 
And then one of the other things, um, I used the peer review function on the writing assignments. I thought it worked really well. The only problems that I had, and it was probably because the students weren't listening, was uploading stuff in the right spot. Um, I think they had a little difficulty doing that. And when I was trying to navigate through them, my student view didn't necessarily match their view um, in terms of what they were seeing and everything and some of the language that's being used. So I think that made it a little bit harder in trying to use that peer review function. But overall, I had a positive experience with that. Um, and then other than that, I think the last question was, what would you do differently in future semesters? I would just start exploring more capabilities. I mean, you can, put, you can really use the module function. You can upload videos. Uh, one of my colleagues next to me, I encouraged him to use it. And he's been doing even more than I have in some of those. I also have a writing class on how many videos you can put about writing up. But I would try to explore some more of the capabilities that it has. That's it. So um, I'm Ann Langendorfer, and I'm a lecturer in the English department, and I teach um, Introduction to Composition. Um, uh, in particular, this fall I taught English 102, which, which is the second in the series. So um, my students are usually new to UT, but um, they earn credit for English 101 at uh, high school or post-secondary option, or um, uh, you know maybe they took it at a community college somewhere. So the pretty mixed group, but um, generally pretty capable group of new students generally 18, 19 year old young students. Um, and then this spring I've been using Canvas in my business writing class, um, which is a you know, mixed group of students from freshman to, so to senior year. Um, both of them, these classes are writing heavy, of course, they're in the English department and they're required classes. Um, for many of my students in the fall, um, and I think also the spring, this is one of their first opportunities to use Canvas because they've been using Blackboard in their other classes. Um, so there's definitely a little bit of a learning curve, both on my end and on theirs. Um, I really like Canvas just because I think it is more user friendly. I think that Blackboard offered a lot of different options, but ultimately ended up making it harder for both those of us who are teaching classes and our students who are taking them. Um, I'll say for now that sort of my primary, um, the primary benefit for me with Canvas um, has been uh, the ability to uh, set up the grade book. I used to call OIT every, every semester and cry and come over and make an appointment and have to do it in person because I just could not figure out the grade book in a way that it was manageable for me. Setting up the grade book in Canvas takes about five seconds. You literally do it while you're setting up your assignments or your uh, modules, which is the term for sort of, you know, sections. So if you want, for example, 15% of your grade to come from homework and 20% to come from exam number one or paper number one, all it takes is a click and a fill out a box and you're done. It was a multi-step process in Blackboard, as many of you know, and that, that part I think is just, um, in and of itself, the easiest and best part about uh, Canvas. Um, I also really like the um, scheduler function in Canvas. You can set up conference appointments, and um, you can use the calendar to set up uh, or reoccurring events. Like, for example, students are always harassing me about when your office hours are. At the end of the semester, I was like, I could have just put that in the calendar. So there are things that I'm learning just by using it. So you can absolutely automate it so that it will always set up um, your office hours into your calendar or individual conferences which are really important in my writing classes um, you set up basically uh, a set of time when you're available for conferences so between say 12 and 4 p.m. and you want the time the, the time slots to be 20 minutes a piece it auto splits them into 20 minute sections and then they can go in and you don't have to you don't have to pass a sign out and then oh those people were lucky and those people got the end of the thing it's great um, once again, it requires a little bit of training of the students because even though you feel like you've explained it, they've never used it. Some kids are sort of like, wait, how did I sign up for that one? So I did have to do a lot of checking to make sure everybody signed up. Um, also on the downside, Canvas does not allow the instructor to then print out a list of the um, uh, conferences. So you end up having to have the laptop um, open and sort of setting that up. But in the end, it's much better for me than the constant emailing back and forth, oh, man, I can't come to that conference after all. If you want, you can cancel your appointment time and reschedule for another open slot. Mm -hmm. uh, there's, there's a lot of flexibility for the students to be able to do it. The downside is when they cancel a conference time, um, 
we don't know if you always get a notification. And so for my class where conferences are required, I did run into a little bit of a, like I had to constantly check, did I see everyone? Who did I see? Um, I wish that there was a little bit more of a um, function on my end to be able to control and see, to make sure that, for example, every student had a conference. <coughs> But the conference scheduling, that part is such a huge advantage um, over Blackboard that I, I'm really appreciating that. Um, I think it sounds to me like what Arthur was saying about giving students like an overview video or an overview document. I've had a friend who's made videos for her class about how to, for example, look at feedback um, in this, uh, from, so we see it as, what's it called, speed grader? Yes. We see it as speed grader. Our students do not see that, and they actually have to go to an extra step to click on a link that says view feedback. That has ended up being um, a shock to me. Um, like I got halfway through fall semester and couldn't figure out why my students weren't paying attention to my feedback, which I had so diligently put in on uh, speed grader. They didn't know that they had to click on the button that says view, view feedback. So there's a little bit of stuff that you need to do to prepare them to see what all the work you're doing when you're, for example, making comments on their documents. And I think that I wish Canvas would get on that a little because I know you used to be able to write feedback in Blackboard and it was just automatically on view to students. So, um, so yeah, I'd say for, for that kind of thing. Um, I'll add another thing. I don't know if this is just where I'm at with my teaching right now, um, but I have a lot of students who are really anxious about grades. And this has been um, a huge point of contention in my spring class. Um, and I have been feeling really frustrated because I feel my job is to help my students learn skills and um, gain knowledge about their subject matter and about the ways in which they write. Um, and I feel like sometimes I'm fighting a losing battle because every time a new grade gets posted on Canvas, it pops up, I think they might even get a notification. Um, and then I either get emails or uh, people are mad in class or the worst case scenario, your chair gets uh, called. So um, one of the things that I've been thinking about is uh, trying to find ways, and I'm gonna strategize with Rosie this summer, strategize ways to um, do something different with my homework grading because that seemed to be the thing that was the most exacerbating even though homework was only worth five percent every time a new homework grade, grade got posted people were freaking out um, and I think that also it's just sort of like one of those things that we need to be thoughtful about is that because Canvas is so good at communicating one of the things it's communicating to them all the time is the numbers and not necessarily the feedback and the learning that we were hoping our students are going to take away with so I'll just say that I'm in the middle of sort of like a philosophical debate with myself about how to handle the fact that one of the main functions that our students are interested in and care about is the numbers or grades that get assigned for the individual assignments. And I would like to scale that back. And I don't know, in, in Blackboard you used to be able to really easily hide grades. I'm not sure if we can do that. And I'd like to know more about that because I think some of it is just, it just, it's. It's, yeah, it's wreaking havoc on my learning goals and getting away from us achieving what we want to achieve and, and sort of pushed into grade freakouts. So, yeah. Yeah, you can view to grade college. Yes, yes. Only when they're ready to. So, yeah. for you, yeah. you could have those conversations with the next class. The, the problem is when you mute, you mute comments and you mute grades. And so in Blackboard, I think you used to be able to go into the grade book in particular and just mute the grades without it sort of affecting the fact that they could see the grades and comments elsewhere. So there's sort of a link between the actual assignment and the grade book. So yeah. Everything's yeah. so yeah. connected. Yeah, it's all connected. But, uh, yeah. but also it's important. What would be a nice feature is if the instructor could choose what generates notification and what does. Yes. It's just yeah. incredibly annoying that right. every little thing you does. Right. And eventually the students will turn off the notification because right. they get so many, particularly right. now all classes are on canvas. Right. They're just been going to be swamped. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah, you're right. And the, the notification feature can be such a huge asset. But yeah, I had four or five classes, and I was constantly getting dinged left and right for mm -hmm. assignment changes and all of that. So it should be that yeah. the instructor has some choice of what gets notified, well, what generates see, a notification. Well, let me see if at the system level, we can set the default to be the data digest. 
Yeah. Uh, and I'm not sure that we can, but that that you know, students can of course choose the video contest, yeah. uh, which is certainly what I would do. Uh, but we're we're looking to see if we can do something for the system. They shouldn't be able to choose though, no, none, and that's what the, some some yeah, of our problems that's is. Where some of the grad oh, students are like, oh, but I never found out about that. Uh, uh, <laughs> because there is in five places. Where I think the biggest bigger problem is too much choice is that they let the students turn all notifications off. I mean, it's a little bit. It's all about the students. Yeah. 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 Very interesting. But because they generate so many right. that are just useless sometimes. Just big, something is in the works and it's right. not even finished and there's notification and then you make change and it's not finished yet. It's still in there. That students eventually will turn it off because they just get so many of them. Yeah. I don't want the students to turn them off. I just don't want to send so many. Yeah, <laughs> yeah and then it, then it really is on us to sort of, you know, be thoughtful about uh, for example, having all of our assignments or as many of our assignments ready to go before the semester starts because whatever is there already um, doesn't generate, you know, updates. But if, for example, you put in a new assignment or whatever, I think that they get a notification about that. So there's sort of ways in which I think it's, it has put the pressure on me a little bit more to put as much of my course up as possible at the beginning of the semester. And I was not in the habit of that. I often would, you know, over the course of the semester, release assignments. And I, I don't know, I, I've been thinking a lot about that, too. Sure. You're up, OK. Hi, I'm, I'm Adam Kierton. I'm a assistant professor in the philosophy department. Um, I've used Canvas for two semesters, uh, twice in a large lecture course with TAs, one of them Ten TAs, um, which was really cool. um, uh, and then two sort of you know three hundred level courses. So I agree with, with most everything that's been said uh, so far. I quite like Canvas, uh, especially I'm grateful to the IT department for um, all the work that they, they did help me get, get going. So uh, um, I guess uh, what we most interest maybe is to talk about some of the um, potential issues that I had with it um, and, and go from there. So first, a good thing, um, for the first time in the semester, I used the group um, uh, feature. So I had group presentations in yes. my class, and the students could self-enroll in whatever group they liked. Um, I could then grade the group as a whole, and uh, it would automatically fill in the grades for each student. Um, and I could leave feedback that would be sent to each, each student. Um, the groups actually had their own um, Canvas pages that they could access. And that they could have use the wiki or you know talk back and forth. They could email each other. So that was that was a really awesome way to sort of get the groups connected and talking to each other. So that that was very that was very cool. Um, the uh, yeah it, probably some committee needs to sit down and think about these notifications. Um, I'll just say that my son is uh, goes to middle school in Oak Ridge, and they now use Canvas for eight classes that he's oh taking, my gosh. and they automatically sign up parents for these notifications. <laughs> <laughs> Talk about like ultra, like you know, it just is like dying to make us helicopter parents because I'm yeah. like, you know, I'm like, you know, it, it, you know, inquiring like, why did you get a 92 on this math no. homework, you know? Um, so, uh, but one, I'll just add one feature, and I'm sure the IT department can think about it because I know other universities do have default settings that students uh, are, are given um, on campus. Uh, is somehow that there needs to be a kind of notification that we are going to be sure they're going to get immediately. So in Blackboard, you know, I could at least know when I sent out a certain kind of announcement that was important, the students would get it. It wouldn't just be thrown in the middle of a digest. It wouldn't just be um, uh, you know, lost to the ether. I knew that they were going to have an email, and then I, that gave me the standing to then hold them responsible for the information that was in it. The more nebulous this gets, the harder it is for us then to um, Work sort of you know strict liability theory like you know make them liable for whatever information is in these, yeah. these special announcements. Um, another small issue is that on Canvas the the term syllabus is a sort of misnomer, really, isn't it? Um, and that that sort of threw me. Yes. Um, yeah. that the syllabus, as you know, is just it just aggregates your assignments. But um, so when students are looking for the syllabus, they'll often click on the syllabus link, um, uh, and that's not what. I, uh, another issue that I had was I like to organize my classes 
um, in which there are, you know, not by week, but by lecture day, right? There's the date, right. reading, date. I mean, that's the sort of typical syllabus structure. Okay. It's not so obvious how to do that with, with Canvas. I came up, if we look at it, with a jury rigged um, way to do it, but it's not nearly as um, convenient and user friendly. So the ideal thing would be to be able to basically replicate our paper syllabus in an electronic form in the format that we typically have our, our paper syllabi, which is organized by date. And so I don't know what Canvas can do about that. I actually do that. I take those days and make the day an assignment. Yeah. And that has been the closest I've gotten to what you're talking about. So anyway, I mean, it would be nice if in future releases of Canvas, yeah. maybe they'll uh, yeah. pay more attention to clearly what they were thinking was people who organize by topic. Yeah. Um, and whereas I want them to read a certain thing on a certain day. Um, a, uh, another issue that I had is with clickers. I don't know if anybody uses clickers, but I, I do use clickers. Um, uh, it's, it works, right? The functionality uh, is there. Um, it's not as sort of odd. It took some thinking um, to figure out how to make the whole thing work, work together. Um, and so, you know, maybe a, a, a bit more of a tutorial on exactly what to do to get I think the two changes happening at the same time make a bigger problem going to the cloud and going to Canvas happening at the same time and trying to figure that out. Trying to get it all, yeah, e exactly. That's what I feel like made the problem. Yeah, it was a rough patch in the fall. It's yeah. very, yeah. In particular, it's a perfect It's hard to throw them out the window most days. <laughs> um, one of, I mean, it's a small, it's a small thing. But now that I got the thing working, I, you know, so I use the Turning Point software. It um, uh, integrates with Canvas, uploads the column. But then the column is just thrown in like a totally random place, all right? It's not thrown into the clickers column, right? It's thrown into like the paper assignment column, right? Whichever like uh, um, category is first in my, in my thing. And so then inevitably I upload the thing and then students, I get a barrage of emails like, how did I get you know, uh, a 42 on my first paper? You know, yeah. like, okay. Oh, you yeah, know. Yeah, yeah. So it's a sort of, I have to be sure when I do it, then of course you have to wait for the thing and then go and move it. So that's a small thing, I don't know. Um, be done about that, but um, it would be nice you to have. You put it over into the other. Yeah, I do. I have to go take and put it over there, and um, they get that notification like instantly. Right. Instantly, yeah. and then yeah. they're, they're all. You've already got emails. They're all free. Before, they're all free. Before you get moved. Aww. So that's a that's a small thing. Um, I, a good thing. I with my TAs, I sort of figured out. It took some work, but the workflow um, with having TAs had, you know, grade the papers. I set it up so that their grades were not the final grades. Um, sometimes I even had two TAs grade a paper, they could have comments, I could look at it, um, and the release, I mean, so that whole thing really works so much better than on, on Blackboard. Um, so I don't know if there are, there must be tutorials out there that could sort of really, um, you know, make this very simple, but uh, I think people who teach large lecture courses um, would really benefit from, from that, that structure. And then lastly, and this is kind of um, now wonky or nerdy, um, but, you know, I like computers, and I actually got into the um, one nice thing about Canvas is that it has what's called an API. That is, there's a way in which you can interact with Canvas through um, programming languages. Um, and so you can write up little scripts that can do various things on, on Canvas. You can, you know, dump your grades and move to a certain format or do weird math with them or um, whatever. So it's really cool. Yeah. Um, and it's, it, the documentation for it is, is great. Um, so I, just my parting thoughts of you know what for the future what IT what IT could be doing, maybe you know gathering together some of these little little problems that people have like my thing with the clickers, and just write a few little scripts, right, and then somehow make them available so that people could can use them. Um, that would sort of dramatically increase the functionality for the particular uses that people at our university uh, use. So for example, I, I use one that um, I put a link to my um, uh, uh, PowerPoint presentation in a certain place. I don't want that to be uploaded to Canvas. I always forget to do it afterwards, um, uh, before class, I mean. And so I set up, wrote a little script that at a, right at the time the class ends, it goes and takes that link and uploads it to the right place on Canvas. So then the link appears on Canvas to the students. So that's not built into Canvas. I had to do a little work, and it was kind of fun to do it the kids. Um, but anyway, things like that, that if you all find that there are uses that people can make for it, with your all's knowledge, you could write one of these things in five minutes, and uh, it, would, it would really make people's lives easier. So you're, you're right in our wheelhouse of where we're going. 
right? Um, once we yeah, yeah, yeah. thirty first comes. Good luck the next year. Though, right? Right? Probably put up some yeah. stuff off yeah. and just try to you know. <laughs> I know. It's well taken. Yeah. Yeah. Again, one of those yeah. nice ideas and advantages that led us to camp. Yeah, exactly. Right. Well, thank you. Hi, I'm Jennifer Morrow. I'm a faculty member in Evaluation, Stats, and Measurement, and I use Canvas primarily uh, with graduate students. So I teach uh, mostly master's and doctoral students um, in a variety of courses, and I really liked Blackboard. I still miss Blackboard. <laughs> I was one of the resistant ones, like, okay, if I don't learn it this semester, my life will be hell as of June 1st in my summer class. So I sat down with Rosie, and she came and did a couple of the trainings, and I reluctantly said, fine. And I'm the program coordinator, so I said, okay, and now if I have to do it, you all have to. <laughs> so I said, everybody in the ESM program, we all have to use Canvas this semester to work out the bugs, so that way in the summer, when we all teach, most of us in the summer teach completely online asynchronous courses. And I'm like, I don't want to screw that up, so let's screw it up this semester and see what happens. Um, Were you successful? Uh, well, you know, I'm screwing it up. Or <laughs> ask my students, but uh, I like a lot of features of Canvas, but there's some little things that I still miss from Blackboard. And so, you know, uh, my, I say, I'd say my biggest thing is, you know, the trainings have been good. I, I know I can, since Rosie's a graduate, I can always call Rosie and say, hey, help me with this. But in terms of the documentation and the how-to guides, they're so clunky. And I'm really like, I need something that is idiot-proof that click on this, here's the screenshot, how to do that. So I finally ended up creating my own Canvas handout that I use for myself and my TAs, especially because getting them to how do I see it as the, you know, the instructor side versus the student side, um, which is a lot easier to navigate than the, the larger documentation. So that is really, and I share that with my students, so that's really helped my students as to how do I upload an assignment, how do I give you feedback? Yeah. Because no one looks at no, the yeah. large student handbook. They, they're never going to do it. But this is 20 pages. That seems to be something, oh, I'll look, I'll look there. Um, so that has really helped. Um, what I really like about Canvas is instead of uploading file by file, I give a lot of stuff. Everything is online. I put everything onto my course management system. So now with dumping sets of files, that's been really helpful. But what I don't like is I take those and I do modules. And so I do week-to-week -week modules. Why can't we have folders in modules? Why do I have to use text to yeah. organize? That's the, yeah, exactly. And then the students like, you have 50 files, <laughs> Dr. Morrow, in one module. And so I'm trying to like indent this one, and like you look yeah. underneath here, and then we do activities, and I put new files folders. that, yeah, 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 folders. Maybe even color code. Whoa, I know. Oh, yeah. come I know. on, slow down. So <laughs> someone smart <laughs> needs to write that script. Because then, then it would be nice because um, one of the things that uh, students have complained about is at files, I have everything organized by folders. But then when it goes to modules, they have to really be careful as to where this is. And then it, for whatever reason, it will alphabetize things. No, I want it by when I've uploaded. Um, and so if that could kind of match to make things a little bit easier for students to find, that would be nice. Um, one thing that I have screwed up on, and Tommy Gary, we, we both have done this, is I really would love if the default, when you go from files to modules, when you put in new text, that it doesn't, it's not not published. Yes. Oh, oh. Just publish everything. Even if we're wrong, I'd rather be wrong and yeah. have it there that students can see. Yep. And I think that they have the assignment. Yep. And maybe I'm lucky enough to go away that weekend, and all of a sudden I start yep. getting texts. But where's the assignment talks about? Or no one will tell me until the day yeah. before it's due, because they haven't looked at it. Oh, I can't find it on Canvas. And I think it's been there for two weeks, because I can see it. And I just got little, little thoughts. Yep. I would like that as an option. There are some assignments I want there right away, but then there's some I want up there. I want to make sure this, like, it's a key to a review that I don't want until after we're done with that day or something. I don't want them to see that for a while. So I don't want that to go up published right away. I want to be able to set a date. But it there. does if you put it in files. Right. So right. if you put it in files, it automatically goes up. Right. Okay. And so, so then you have to then click click, click to, oh. to, to not publish okay. it. But when you move something that it's the is there from files to modules, yeah. the default is not. Oh. So I, that's why I made a suggestion. I caused the biggest disaster of my semester by creating a new module. I thought I was being so good getting things organized because I don't really like the modules thing. It's not very helpful to me. I choose, you know, create assignments for every class day. and. 
I was like, oh, let's be organized, Anne, and we're going to create a new module, and we'll dump all these assignments in there. And I did that. I'm like, man, I'm so up on this. And it was like the morning before I was teaching, and you know, I thought, okay, everything's fine. And I get to class, and I give a quiz, and my students are like, Ms. Langendorfer, how am I supposed to know this stuff on this quiz? And I said, well, it was in your assignment last night. I was kind of snarky because I was ticked. And, uh, <laughs> and the student goes, what assignment? They said, there was nothing published. They said, you know, when we clicked on this link, it said we couldn't access it. And I, my chin dropped before I was like, oh my gosh, like this is not what I wanted to have happen. Well, of course, these are, my students were waiting till an hour before class, and that was the time when I was creating the module. As soon as I created the module and I didn't click it over to publish, anything that I had dumped into that module disappeared from their, from their view. So the module view, like you just have to be really, really careful with it. Yeah. Um, and then um, another thing that I don't know if my students complain or are happy about, it just depends on when you ask, is I put a lot of stuff on campus, like so many files that when I was starting to create my, my classes and then some of them, same files are need for both, or both classes, that I actually saw my things start running out of room. And I'm like, wait, I thought we had unlimited space on this. And so someone and then told me, oh, but if you then copy. So I finally figured out if I copy, so I put it in one class, so I had like an SPSS handout, and then I could copy that very easily into other classes. But before, I was putting it in all three of my classes, and then I saw that go from like 0% to like 80%. I'm like, oh my god, I'm only in the third week of the classes. I'm not gonna run, I'm gonna run <laughs> yeah, out of room. Right. But some of it is a magical person I can email and give me more space, so I may have to, I may have to, I may have to do that. Yes, yeah, I figured. Um, I would love as a program coordinator, because I use, um, we have a seminar course for our doctoral students, but they take that seminar every single semester. And we give uh, them all kinds of uh, content on dissertation resources, comprehensive exam. I would love if we were able to have a, a permanent course that kind of follows us instead of it semester by semester. That way I could put all of my students, they can never say, well, I didn't know we had this form for the graduate school. It's right there. It's always on Canvas. So what I do now, what I did with Blackboard, is every semester I copy. So I copy from fall all my stuff to spring, and then you know have to change everything. If I just had a permanent course that or a placeholder that I could use for a program, that would be really that would be really really helpful. Um, when you say copy, do you mean importing from Canvas Commons, or do you mean like just going back and adding each? Going back and adding each, yeah. I mean, with Blackboard, I think you could do like as a, a zip file, yeah. but then things would get messed up and, and change you, organization. You drag and drop a folder. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But if I don't have to do anything. Work with you on that. The, the, the main issue there would be managing the enrollment. Mm -hmm. you know, there are ways we could do a self enroll. Yeah, because yeah, what I do is I add all of the faculty. So we all, add all the faculty yeah. I put as instructors. So that way, you know, uh, they can add anything. They can do announcements. Um, notifications, as everyone said, I like getting notifications. I just put, I just drop things in boxes. But my students have complained that, Jen, you send too much stuff. So I shut off notifications. But then they're like, well, I didn't know we weren't meeting. Or we were meeting in a different room. Mm -hmm. Or you're doing that. So having that emergency, like, you must get this because yeah. we're meeting in another classroom or you know, uh, make sure you copy and bring your laptop today or something. Yeah. Uh, they're not getting that, and you know, or the students that shut off. I can de definitely tell the students that show up on vacations because they look around bewildered yeah. as to I, I didn't know I was supposed to be prepared. Um, I don't know if you can do this. I have not been able to figure this out. Uh, and this is what worries me about going from I have face-to-face -face classes this semester to completely uh, asynchronous online for my summer classes. Is in Blackboard I used to set up my online discussions where uh, if students would post and then they responded to three students, that it would automatically notify me that I can now grade them, that they have now four, at least four postings. Yeah. I have not been able to figure out how to do that at Canvas. And I have classes of 20 students. We do weekly discussions. That's over 120 or so uh, postings. I don't want to have to count. No. Um, so if there's a way to figure out that it will l easily allow me to do these online discussions, that would be great. Otherwise. Gary and I have been talking about how do I modify, you know, what we do in these online classes that are that are asynchronous, in order to make our grading not take up the entire um, uh, the entire time. Um, have you tried SpeedGrader for the discussion board? Yes, but then it doesn't tell doesn't tell you that they've posted four times, um, and so that's the thing is I'm I'm basing my grades on that they have to do a certain amount. Uh, a minimum before it shows up in your gradebook. I'm able to figure that. that. 
Yeah, so I, so I may have to figure out some ways around. Okay. It was also the, the activity report that would okay. help you quickly see. Yeah, because I, I, I don't want to have to start start counting those. Mm -hmm. um, other than that, I said my biggest thing was the folders, and uh, my, my most of my students really like it, uh, but. Uh, there's some things I think they still miss about Blackboard because if anything they say there's there's too much information and you put it in so many places we forget where to go. Yeah. But what I do is I copy links. Like I think I learned this from Lucy Young Lynch. I created my syllabus or homepage that has links. So I'm I'm trying to make it idiot proof, but I think I'm giving too much information yeah. because then they're like, but there wasn't a link there. But like go to files. Everything's in files and everything is in modules. Yeah. So I don't think I think students don't still know where to go. That's it. Yeah. All right. Um, I am probably the person who adopts technology last. Okay. And I'm not in for all of it. So I'm not sure why I'm here. And, and to make matters worse, let me tell you how I got into it. Not only were, was my program switching to doing this, but I said, well, I don't care. Bring it on. Bring it on. You know why? I know Rosie. <laughs> worry about whatever you throw at me because I'll call Rosie and I did. I, I was really feeling pretty good about what I had done until I sat down and I read this card and you probably saw my face turn red because it says it's as easy as one, two, and three. Well, I do things backwards, right? So I said three, create content and my, oh, I did that. Oh, I got this. It says number two, use assignments. Well, I took a lot of time to learn that assignment. So it says number one, the home page. I said, what the hell is that? <laughs> so I think I got some more aspects of a learning curve here uh, to be engaged with. I agree with much that has been said. I was not a fan of Blackboard, but I knew how to do things. Um, in Canvas, um, there was a learning curve. I got help from other individuals. My biggest frustration was I was doing PowerPoints and I wanted to do a recording over my PowerPoints. That took some time to work out. There were several different options, but this was the first time I was teaching a stat concept course, and I felt losing that time was not in my best interest and certainly not in my students' best interest. So I'm, uh, I'm kind of concerned about that. Um, the structure, uh, getting things to students was not a problem. Students accessing things, me forgetting to hit the green button yep. was a disaster in several cases because sometimes students have plenty of time and other times part of the learning experience is you learn something and you respond kind of like real world. Well, if you want to respond then you find out that you didn't click the green button and no one told you. Um, that, that could be pedagogically a, a, real, a real mess. Um, I, I'm comfortable now with Canvas to where I wouldn't want to go back, but I will tell you as a faculty member, um, I would like to see a 10-year commitment of the institution to yeah. Canvas, yes. because if yeah. two years from now yeah. we <laughs> decide that we are going to leave Canvas, I would be the first person at the faculty center saying enough's enough. Because I do see a, a year commitment to really learn this. Mm -hmm. And I appreciate the technology, I appreciate the support, obviously. Um, but I experienced um, impacts upon my teaching and on what I was able to deliver that I couldn't recover from. And I felt I felt like I did a disservice to my students, but I didn't know what I didn't know going into it. So I think we have paid some dues as we kind of early adopters and we learned from it. So that point will take you. Uh, you know, we, we really knew this, uh, you know, really on the front end. Um, the committee of 25 faculty who selected Canvas knew this on the front end, uh, but ultimately, decided it was worth it. Mm -hmm. um, it's not UT yeah, that's the only one that's done it this okay. year. Everybody wholesale left Blackboard. Yeah. My friends across the across the country at universities from Ohio State to Rice have switched to Canvas. So it's, it's clear to me that they have, you know, 
well, sold their product. Well, our commitment to Blackboard was for two decades, and I imagine our commitment to Canvas will outlast my lifetime here at the university. Well, we don't know how long it is. Pardon me? How? Full, full disclosure. Oh, five. You know, we have five years. It's a five year commitment. We have to rebid uh, all years. of our contracts every five years. Okay. okay. But just because we rebid in five years doesn't mean that we necessarily leave Canvas in five years. Okay. Yeah. So, okay. Great feedback. We yeah. want to, you know, show, show some personal growth is popping those up. It sounds like, you know, for me, I have uh, certainly two large takeaways uh, that we need to work with Canvas uh, to make published default and allow folks to unpublish. Yeah. Um, we'll share that feedback but with But then there's this problem. As soon as something is published, it's notification. And you're right. not, not yeah. even ready. Yeah. So that right. first the notification so step has to be solved. Yeah. We can, at the system <laughs> level, you know, tweak up uh, those notification settings um, as sort of a default that students would have. That's not to say that they could go in and change around. But you know, I guess at, at some level, if we set the default to the most important uh, pieces, uh, then why would they change it? Yeah, like announcements. So, An announcement. Yeah. They should yeah. never be able to opt out of that. Yeah. Right, right. That's, I mean, yeah. that, I didn't know that you could opt so out getting an announcement. I find that yeah. shocking because yeah. I rely on that, like, especially yeah. for last minute day yeah. changes. I, how else am I? I mean, I don't even dump my class list into my email anymore. I use Canvas to do all of the communication. So that's kind of, yeah, that's, new, that's news to me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, we'll, uh, we'll look at those things uh, pretty quickly. One of, the, one of the really nice things about Canvas uh, is that they are quite responsive uh, to suggestions. Um, and they push updates to the system every three weeks. Um, so it's not like with Blackboard, uh, well, that's on our roadmap. Uh, we might see it two years from now. Mm -hmm. um, you know, they they really are constant. I have a big uh, one, and I know it's been hurt. But I know you said you love the great book, but I really don't. Yeah. Um, and yeah. the biggest thing, I think it's been hurt, so hopefully somebody's got it somewhere on the map, is that you can't equally wait. And so, unless you do it manually. I can't dump, I can't. Put in, so my clickers, for example, this sets me to 60 points and this one's 70 points. Well, then it goes in as 130 points and divides it out. I want it to go in as a percentage. But even if you change it to a percentage form, the grand total of that column is figured out by points. You can't equally weight. We've looked at forums, Fred's work with me with it, and it, it just can't be done. And so I have to do it manually. So I went in and have to make every single assignment out of 100. Now I can't integrate my clickers. I have to put them in. Either upload them, which I have not mastered. I can't figure out how what the picky format is for that. And I gave up at the beginning you, of the semester, honestly. In, in, mm -hmm. in, in Canvas, you cannot put a column into the gradebook unless it's an assignment. Right. So I you have to first yeah. make the assignment, publish it empty. Then you can download yes. the column and That's finish it. Really the thing you can do. I it's just a long game. And the scores in. And during the time, the students get notifications. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing wrong. Yeah. But, yeah. Yeah. but so now I, I have to manually go well, in yeah. all those scores that could have just been a click of a button. That's why it's that's why it's So that's that's my biggest gripe that I think needs to be on a very short roadmap. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not one that's also if you don't do the standard things. If you want to do anything non-standard, it's completely yeah. awful because you cannot put anything in there that is not an assignment that you have to publish. If you don't publish it, you cannot <laughs> download the column, even if it's empty. <laughs> I, I want another good thing. I, did, I don't know if you mentioned it yet. Is the the app? I really like the app. Yeah. You can it's actually. Not it's like just so much better than, than the Blackboard app. Exactly. I can grade. I can download. I can see everything. It's, yeah. it's just much easier. And I and I have a tiny phone. I don't go to the bigger phones that other people do. Is that in the the UT within the UT app or no, the no, Canvas no, it's separate. separate. It's separate. Yeah. And I have not. So, yeah, I really like it. So. So if there's any consolation on the grade book issue, uh, they currently have in beta uh, what they're calling grades 2.0. Um, that beta program is probably going to run twice. We're hoping that we will become part of that. Uh, 
uh, the second half of the summer, perhaps. Uh, I've asked, and uh, you know, there's supposed to be some real improvement there. Um, I, I haven't seen it, so I don't know. Well, one of the small uh, thing, if you all were talking to them, the you know, talk to them every week. Good. Well, the inbox functionality. I did. I'm talking about that. The emails are not rich text emails. They're just plain text. So if you want to, you know, the links to the things. You know, the announcements, you can boom, do a late boom, comes up. But they're not sending it. And so, you know, when I really have to contact students, I do the email thing. Uh -huh. But then my links look all terrible. Uh -huh. So, uh -huh. yeah. You have to use exposed links. Yeah, exactly. Exposed links. Which is okay. a little bit problematic. So I'll say the other thing I was going to add about the syllabus. I don't, I don't quite understand how people have had in the syllabi because I post my actual syllabus and you can see it here. But also what I really like is um, if you go to the very top, there's a jump to today. You click on that, and that takes you to all the assignments, and you can see where I've put in, um, like I recently got into adding the office hours and then meeting with students. Um, those are all the assignment links. But if you go above these assignment links, you'll see this is my actual syllabus, which has it by day. I translate each one of those days into an assignment. I. It seems to me like in Canvas, it encourages assignments to be the sort of base structure and so any day you know given like like january 12th the first day and i literally would put that in as an assignment even if nothing's due i'll just put zero and don't count towards the grade but it will show up then as a today thing um, and then above that i have all of my course policies um, links to everywhere on campus that i want them to be going to so i don't know so, so I got a question. You did this by hand, right? With uh, no, so I see all your your headers that you had to do yeah, separately. Yeah, totally. You did both yeah. Canvas oh, yeah, so you you could click on HTML view and did that. No, yeah. you don't even have to click on um, HTML view. It has its own um, HTML it sure. aided. So can you dump that from MS Word? So that's what I do. So I'm a Word person. I mm -hmm. I learned Word when I was 12, and I've been using it ever since. So I okay. take my Word yeah, document do and I dump it in. So and it's the Headers, right? Yeah, and anything that doesn't look good, because a lot of the headers okay. do transfer from yeah, Microsoft Word, but, but, but not, not everything. Uniformly. Yeah, so, okay. so I'll go That's in and I'll make any corrections that I, I really, I'm very, very invested in a clean document, so right. I will come in and, and change anything I need. Um, I'll tell you my least favorite thing is that um, bulleted lists in Microsoft Word right. do not transfer as bulleted lists in Canvas and you need to go back and re-bullet them. And That's I not had, my favorite. I had trouble with my headers too with yeah. not uniformly transferred. Yeah. Yeah. So I ended up going back into HTML and by that time I was looking at the clock, I'm like, this is three hours. For that yeah. amount of time, yeah. I'm looking at how many sections. I get my syllabus in Word and just it's a link. Just, yeah, use it as a link. Yeah, that's another thing you can do is you can just at the end, at the top, add yeah. a, a, a yeah, PDF or whatever. Yeah. 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 So. Yeah. And that's where it requires it to be a Google Doc. So I just mm -hmm. put the link to the Google Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anybody else want to share their site? I can sure. Uh, yeah, let's see over here. here. So let's go to mm -hmm. uh, You can do uh, uh, six seven seven. Yes, yes. Oh, okay. So, so the way I use the the syllabus of the home page is I will have a link to everything that's important that can be found okay. everywhere else on campus, and I like. I'm big on color. So <laughs> it's like here, here's my information and they can click on a link to get to the syllabus and I have lecture materials. Some of my classes are, the, the topic is over multiple weeks, some it's, it's weekly. So I do lecture materials and I put the date to remind students because they couldn't find stuff. And then as I put new materials, so I have exams and then I create group pages. That was actually quite helpful. So the students really enjoy that because then they can share files um, and then I can give them feedback and then my TA still had access to everything. And then if you go under uh, modules, I, I organize it by, okay, first I have my camp, my course information, then I created some campus resources, and then I do lecture. This is where I get annoyed. So I have acquired readings and option readings. So I just text, and then I would uh, indent. And so then you scroll down. Now I actually have the lecture file oh, stuff lecture files and activity files. So I was using text to basically organize, but yeah. it'd be much nicer if it was folders. It'd be less things to scroll through, especially on an app. It'd be a lot easier for students to find if they, I could have folders in there. Okay. 
So can I see your group page? I'm really curious about sure. that. Sure. Uh, people? Yeah. yeah. That was hard to find. I wish it could say people slash groups. Yeah. Or, yeah. Oh, and so cool. I have one for each of the group analysis. So. And they can, can they actually, oh, that's, see, yeah, I didn't they know can, about that part. They can exchange files, they can do stuff. And but a lot of them, they used to using Google Docs or Dropbox. And so even though you give them the option, they don't all use the option. Okay. I haven't seen that before. So, so that group homepage, they, they control that. They can have pages. They control the everything, and I just, I'm just a stalker on it. I yes. do. Yes. Mm -hmm. They do. And could you do, do mind this? Sure. Just to give you an idea of what this Adam Sears and um, uh, Phil lost me one one. It's a merge site. So that not a second. Yeah, it's a show. Uh, that was that was last semester. This is uh, you were done that there. So you see, a module is a topic, then I, I use uh, here go okay. letters. Here, here, go. here go, like God, okay. So then there's a topic, subtopic, huh. yeah. then date, and then I put, so I have to sort of hand. Oh, you're actually, really doing a lot there. there. Oh, yeah. But so just having a list of dates isn't all that. It's better to have it like this, right? And so if those could be folders or something like that where yeah. you could uh, yeah. organize. I don't know where they are with the folder mop, you know, yeah. notion. Um, my guess is we won't see that, but yeah. Yeah, who knows. One of the things you might consider is uh, using, since, since most of your stuff is calendar-based, date-based, you might consider using the calendar view as your homepage. The calendar's terrible. <laughs> when everything's there, like you it, on that day, you click on it, and it, what don't you like about it? It is. In fact, I, I forgot what it was, but I actually put on one of the Canvas developer forums, I put a suggestion about um, the dates. I forgot what it was, and people are like, oh, yeah, that's problems. Um, so I don't, I don't quite remember what I can't, I can't say, but I remember there was a reason why it just wasn't there. Yeah, but the main thing is organized by topics, right? You want the main organized hierarchical structure. So, so when they can they, if they can they click on a date? What happens when they click on a date? Nothing. Nothing. It's just no. text. No. So yeah. text. Why not create that as an assignment? Skepticism as an assignment and incompatibilism as an assignment. Why? Why do this as a separate thing? Because the assignment then could be a part of a module called free will. Because it's not an assignment. Because the meanings of the words, this is this is a persistent problem with Canvas. Mm -hmm. The meanings of the words when you get into their system have changed. Yeah. That that's what we're dealing with. with this, the conceptual mm -hmm. you know, yeah. perspective of what is. syllabus is. Mm -hmm. yep. yeah. Canvas has a separate vocabulary that is not shared with the rest of us. <laughs> and that, that's a persistent problem. Yeah. Yeah. It is. Yeah. I guess that I was the, the thing that we noticed probably first and foremost for us yeah. really was wow. This is the terminology uh, yeah. well, issue. The, the, really it would be better off for us all if they created up new words completely. Yeah. Like right. call this thing on the left, the Zunga bubble. And then, <laughs> because that doesn't have a meaning right. for the rest yeah. of us, yeah. we're not going in there with an expectation yeah. of what a, what the yeah. syllabus is. Yeah. And so that's, yeah. that, that, that's a, a persistent problem. And yeah. I don't see any way around yeah. that. Right. Because they're using the, the common terminology in order to sell the product. Go under um, files. So I tell students, my file system is way more organized than my modules because then I put everything, you click on say exam one materials or anything, yeah, and there's all, there's everything they need and I can publish or unpublish or I can put in a, in a key. Right. I like what I can do in, in files, but the problem is, is I then move over to modules and then I'm having to go and scroll and then yeah. click on things to move things over to make things uh, more organized. So if I could just take that file that folder yeah. and just literally copy paste. Yeah, I started running out of room in some of mine, so I started putting things in different places and then just, just say copy. Yeah, it's it's interesting, you know, some folks want one way to do things and yeah. other folks want twenty ways to do things. And Canvas provides twenty ways to do things. Um, and so in, in many ways, it, you know, over that you know, learning curve year, that transition year, mm -hmm. you have to sort of find your way that works best for you and what works best for your students. And so 
it's it's the beauty and the curse yeah. uh, of canvas is that it provides so many different ways to do things, um, even for students. Uh, and uh, what we uh, converse about frequently uh, is, wow, our faculty really want to be in control <laughs> you know, of, yeah. of, of, That's of the whole yes. learning experience. Uh, well, can I make a suggestion? I think that would help. Yeah. I worry about some of my colleagues. I told Gary, I'm going to hide before June 1st yeah. because many of my colleagues have resisted moving over. Sure. And so they just think it's going to magically be ready and then they're going to be all set to teach their summer classes. Yeah. But they all know that we know how to do it. So I'm like, I'm going to hide because. Yeah. Oh, cool. The documentation is so clunky. When and you say the documentation, I, I wanted to ask you about yeah. that. Do you mean just like searching on the web? Can, on the Canvas guide? There's that fa the instructor guide and there's the student So they did recently update their guide mm -hmm. pages yeah, here. Yeah. So you can go instructor, student. But these have all um, screenshots with step-by-steps. I find it clunky, and much. students yeah. find it clunky, faculty, and so I created the smaller one, but as I'm listening to them, oh, I wish I did that, I wish I did that, I love a, like the best practices, so it's like, how does she do her class? Oh, I'll pull that, that worked for her, how does he do his class? And so maybe having some of these like best I think, practices. I think you're, you're right, Jennifer, and once we have folks, you know, well, I just, day, I'd love to see know. more people's classes, because I mean, just hearing everybody talking about how they're doing it, you're all using it completely yeah. different. Your reliance on files and your interest in sort of thinking about the way that you're discreetly hierarchy, yeah. Yeah, these things. I I <laughs> can <laughs> I I can be able to, you know, really adapt to the module assignment thing in some ways. I don't love the module thing, but for me, thinking about assignments as a placeholder and a way to get, get it onto that front page has been really useful to me. But it, it has to do with how much are you willing to put into that assignment. And I am willing to dump a lot of links and things into the assignment, even if it's not a, t you know, you know, sometimes it's to do, read something, or, you know, it could be uh, watch a PowerPoint, or, mm -hmm. you know, but it, it, you, it is kind of conceiving of assignment as more than just our traditional, they have to write something or take a list. Yeah.